morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to the bright side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you have questions about our truth treatment products, truth skin health products, which are available at truthtreatments.com, if you have questions about formulations, ingredients, anything we're speaking about here today, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our websites as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can help change lives. If you just want to work out of your home, if you're an entrepreneur, you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, you want to earn as much or as little money as you like working out of your home, writing off your home office, writing off your mileage, your stamps, Enjoying all the tax benefits associated with having your own business for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. You can also sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, if you'd like to check out our truth treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with blemishes or hyperpigmentation, dark spots, if you want to... Uh, to prevent or reverse the formation of fine lines and wrinkles. You want to take a look at our retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol as well as a big dose of vitamin C, premium fat-soluble vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've got lines open for you, by the way, 844-236-6010. Excuse me. If you uh, have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. We have been talking about serotonin and melatonin and the pineal gland and its response to sunlight. We said the pineal gland is an eye in the middle of your head. It's a third eye. It reads the sunlight, it secretes accordingly melatonin and uh, serotonin in the daytime and melatonin in the nighttime. Both are life management hormones, serotonin and melatonin. Serotonin is involved with how we adjust to uh, the vicissitudes, the ups and downs of day-to-day -day life. It's an awareness hormone, a daytime hormone. Melatonin antagonizes serotonin. It's the opposite of serotonin. Even though chemically, from a chemical structure point of view, they're pretty darn similar, these two uh, uh, these two elements, melatonin and serotonin, these two biochemicals. But while the structures are very similar, their properties are very not similar, very 
very anti-similar. In fact, they're opposites. Serotonin alertness and alertness and day day to day life reactions, our ability to react to circumstances in life. Ser- uh, when serotonin levels are low, our reactions are sluggish. They're slow. They're less effective. And sometimes the sluggish and slow way of reacting can be interpreted as apathy or perhaps depression. And this is why doctors will prescribe serotonin drugs for, um, for what they call depression. It's not so much that serotonin is an antidepressant as much as it's involved with helping us handle day-to-day stresses. It's not an anti, uh, serotonin is not a happy hormone. It's a stress management hormone, a, a life management hormone. And by the way, There's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. Let's get that nonsense out of our heads. If any doctor ever mentions chemical imbalances, that's a doctor that doesn't understand biochemistry. Chemical imbalances do not exist. Chemistry is always in a balance. It's always appropriate for what the body needs to do. We think it's inappropriate because of the net effect, but the body's always responding to the environment somehow. If we got too much stresses in our life, <coughs> excuse me, too much stresses in our life, the body will secrete hormones accordingly. But it doesn't mean that there's, the body's messed up, that there's an imbalance. That's a marketing term. It's not a scientific term. So Prozac is uh, a, a stress management substance. It's, a, it's not so much an anti-stress hormone as it much as it helps us handle stresses. Melatonin is a relaxing substance. It's a nighttime substance. It's a growth and repair substance. It's involved in building. Unlike serotonin, which, like most hormones, can be toxic when levels get too high, and levels of serotonin don't get too high unless we medicate ourselves. They don't naturally get too high. But if you take too much drugs, too many drugs, or if you're combining drugs, combining serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs, so-called, Effexor and uh, and Zoloft and Prozac. I remember when Prozac came out in the 1980s. Oh, my God. Did that revolutionize the psychiatric business? All, all of a sudden, everybody was on Prozac. They were using Prozac as a diet pill even. They still do, actually, because serotonin, Prozac uh, su- has an appetite suppressant effect. Anyway, uh, melatonin, unlike serotonin, is completely non-toxic. In fact, melatonin is actually like a vitamin in many ways. According to Dr. Gary Bubenik, B-U-B-E-N-I-K, who's a melatonin researcher, According to Dr. Bubenik, writing in the book, Melatonin and the Promotion of Health, this is a very interesting textbook if you're really interested in melatonin. It's a little little heady, a little scientific, but it's got some really good information. According to Dr. Bubenik, who wrote a, excuse me, wrote a chapter in this book, melatonin is actually part hormone and part vitamin. That's a quote, part hormone, part vitamin. I'm not making that up. Melatonin is actually has vitamin-like effects. It's an antioxidant. In fact, melatonin is such a powerful antioxidant that it is uh, exceeds the antioxidant properties of uh, potential of vitamin E by several times. It's fat soluble, it can enter into cells, it enters into the brain, it's secreted into the placenta in the developing fetus, and it's secreted in mother's milk. Babies are getting melatonin in mother's milk. Now, you're not gonna find melatonin in your formula, so if you're uh, unfortunately not able to, to breastfeed, it's very gonna be very tough for your baby to get Uh, everything it needs. There's so many components in breast milk that are not in formula. Formula just contains some of the nutrients that are in breast milk, but the hormones and the trace elements, those are not going to be found in formula, including melatonin. And endocannabinoids, by the way. Cannabinoids being uh, uh, the active material in the marijuana plant or the hemp plant, if you will. Both uh, the marijuana plant and the hemp plant contain these cannabinoid substances, which are exactly the same as the cannabinoids that are found in human beings and exactly the same as the cannabinoids that are found in breast milk, not in formula. Melatonin is not just a brain substance either. It's not just for the brain and for the nervous system. In fact, check this out, melatonin is mostly a digestive biomolecule. It's mostly secreted in the digestive tract. Yes, it's a digestive, it's like a digestive aid, uh, a a digestive aid. Now, you got to be careful because it does have some hormone properties and I'm not, I don't, I'm not advising and I don't support just taking a whole bunch of melatonin, but you might want to think about it if you're dealing with digestive health issues, whatever they may be, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, even GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. A 
Okay, we're back on the bright side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side, and we are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on our archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com and also BrightSideBen.com. If you miss programs or you'd like to review programs or you want to direct a client or customer, friend, loved one to a specific topic, we've got search engines at Ben Fuchs Archives and BenFuchsArchive.com, as well as BrightSideBen.com, and you could purchase your young uh, all your longevity products at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com. We've got blog stories, news uh, blog posts, and news stories and videos up at all our websites. Also, uh, the longevity products, and also a join the team link that you can click on if you want to start a longevity business and earn some money helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you've benefited from nutritional supplementation, now is the time that you can that you can give back, that you can help share what you've learned, the power and the importance of vitamins, minerals, trace nutrients dietary changes, lifestyle changes. If you're dealing with a chronic long-term degenerative disease, nutrition is a powerful and viable option, a powerful and viable option to anything that you can get from the doctor. When are we going to learn? When is it going to get through our heads that the modern medical model cannot help us when it comes to long-term chronic progressive degenerative diseases? It is hidden in plain sight, people. We've got more doctors per capita than any other culture in the history of the planet, and we have more heart disease than any other culture in the history of the planet, more diabetes, more obesity, more cancer, more autoimmunity. We're just falling apart for the second year in a row. Life expectancy has dropped, and yet we go to doctors, we deify doctors, we memorialize the medical model in Obamacare and national, in, uh, uh, national health care, national health insurance, where we all have to go to the doctor. It's just craziness, people. We're not sick. We're starving. We're missing the raw materials the body needs to do its business. Now, is nutritional supplementation all you need? No, it is not all you need. You need it. Absolutely. You're not going to get the nutrients you need, the mighty 90 essential nutrients that a cell needs, the menu from which a cell eats. Cells have a menu they eat from, and ain't, there ain't no drugs on that menu. It's all vitamins, minerals, and trace nutrients, and without these substances, cells cannot do their business, and all disease is cell disease. So a nutritional supplement program is not optional. Eating correctly is important, too. Mental and emotional strategies are important as well as our spiritual strategies and, and, and linking or connecting up to whatever spirituality, however you see spirituality, the divine intelligence, I call it. Health is multidimensional, and one of the key elements is a nutritional supplement program, and there is no getting around it, and any boneheaded medical professional who does not understand this, or even worse, who demeans and marginalizes this idea, should turn in his license, because he's doing nobody a service, and he's violating the Hippocratic Oath, which says, do no harm. All right. 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking melatonin, serotonin. Later on uh, today, or tomorrow, perhaps, we'll get into cortisol. Very misunderstood hormone. Before we went to break, we talked about how melatonin is not just a brain hormone, it's a digestive hormone. And there's lots of studies that show that melatonin supplementation can be beneficial and that melatonin deficiencies can cause problems at the level of the digestive tract. There's hundreds of times more melatonin in the digestive tract than there is in the pineal gland. It is, like serotonin, almost... Lar I don't say exclusively, we'll say largely a digestive tract hormone, almost exclusively in the case of serotonin. 95% of the serotonin in your body is produced in the digestive tract, and similarly, vast amounts of melatonin are produced in the digestive tract. What does that say when the two master hormones, and that's what they are, they're the master hormones in the body, melatonin and serotonin, which are produced in the pineal gland in response to the brain, in response to light, and then stimulate the production of all the other hormones, what does it say that these two master hormones are largely digestive tract hormones? What it says is the digestive tract is critical when it comes to the biochemical functioning, the, the healthy biochemical functioning or the non-healthy biochemical functioning of the body. That's why it's the first point on the triangle of disease. I get letters all the time from the most horrific, heartbreaking, tragic, tear-jerking letters from people who have multiple health challenges, all in one body. It's, it's like some people have a, a, 
an entire list of everything that can go wrong in your body in one body. Not a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's pretty bad sometimes. If you're dealing with multiple health challenges and you don't know where to turn, focus on the digestive system. Simplify your health program by focusing on the digestive system. By fasting, eliminating problem foods, and then using nutrients that support the digestive system. And in this case, melatonin is not strictly a nutrient, but using melatonin. And as I said before we went to break, I'm not a big believer in just taking super high doses of melatonin, although I will say taking high doses of melatonin have been shown to be effective for certain health, uh, digestive health challenges. But if you're dealing with any, any kind of digestive health issue, you might want to think about supplementing with a little melatonin, especially if you're having sleep problems with it. Serotonin is an appetite suppressant. Melatonin is an appetite stimulant. In fact, it may be that the well-known appetite, appetite suppression that occurs as folks get older may be related to melatonin deficiency because melatonin levels drop significantly. Serotonin levels don't drop as significantly. They don't even really drop, I don't think. They certainly don't drop significantly. Melatonin drops significantly as we get older. Remember, it's a growth and repair substance. So as we get older, this drop in melatonin can be associated with a lot of health problems. Failure to grow, failure to repair, thinning skin. Dementia has been associated with, uh, with melatonin deficiencies. And if you're dealing with dementia or you want to know somebody who's dealing with dementia, three milligrams of melatonin a night would not be a bad idea, especially if the dementia is associated with insomnia, which it oftentimes is, especially if the dementia is associated with um, appetite suppression, which it oftentimes is. So using melatonin can help with dementia, it can help with sleep, uh, help the uh, dementia patient or anybody sleep. It can also help stimulate the appetite. And melatonin improves blood supply to the intestine, to the gut. That means more nutrients to the gut, to the cells of the digestive tract. The digestive tract itself is made up of cells like any other part of the body. And you say, well, of course it is. Well, this is interesting because the digestive tract is not technically part of the body. It's outside the body. The, the tube that runs from our mouth to the other end is sequestered. It is walled off from the rest of the body. And it has its own kind of brain, its own kind of nervous system, its own kind of hormone system. When that system breaks down, when that, when that tube starts to break down, stuff gets into the blood inappropriately. That's called leaky gut syndrome. One of the reasons this occurs is because the cells of this tube, the cells of the intestine themselves are starving, suffocating, and toxic, like all cells. Well, melatonin improves blood supply to these cells, and that means more nutrition to the cells of the intestine, more detoxification to the cells of the intestine, more oxygenation of the cells to the intestine. That means healthier intestinal cells. That means reduced likelihood of leaky gut syndrome. So if you are dealing with leaky gut, and rest assured, if you have any long-term progressive health challenge, you have some degree of leaky gut, period, whether you've been diagnosed or not, using melatonin can be helpful there, too. And there's more about melatonin and the digestive system. We'll continue when we come back from our break on Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open, lots of lines open for you. 844-236-6010. We'll be back after this. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have a empty board. Uh, nobody's on the line, so give us a call now if you've tried to get in in the past at 844-236-6010. Otherwise, we'll continue talking here about melatonin and serotonin. Also, uh, got an interesting article here about magic mushrooms. I'm talking about that here in a moment. So melatonin is a... Uh, we don't think of it that way. Nobody thinks of it that way. It's a digestive, uh, a digestive hormone. It is a digestive hormone. That means it's got multiple roles to play in health, not just in, uh, in helping you sleep. Everybody knows that melatonin is an anti-insomnia kind of uh, a nutritional supplement, but how many times have you heard that melatonin is, is the quintessential anti-aging substance in the body? And anti-sickness substance. And when I, but when I say sickness, I'm referring to long-term chronic progressive degenerative diseases. There's lots of ways why, there's lots of reasons why melatonin is important for, uh, for long-term 
for long-term health challenges, progressive health challenges, but most importantly, because it protects against leaky gut syndrome. And if you have a long-term progressive disease, a disease that's not getting better, rest assured you've got leaky gut syndrome. You don't need to be tested. You don't need to spend money to have a, a special uh, a functional medicine doctor test you. He'll do all kinds of tests. There's a breath test for it, and there's a, there's a stool test for leaky gut syndrome. Don't waste your money. If you're sick, you've got leaky gut syndrome, period. Let me say that again. That's so important and flies in the face of what we hear from healthcare practitioners and quote, functional medicine, I'm doing a little air quote here, functional medicine, who are just as dim-witted as regular medicine professionals. Let me, let me take that back. Which, the science of which is just as dim-witted as regular medicine, slightly less dim-witted. From the uh, British Journal of Pharmacology, could melatonin be the key to healthy aging? How do you like that? This, came, this, this just came out last week. A new British Journal of Pharmacology review highlights the role of melatonin, a hormone that is produced at night in regulating sleep in the body's biological or circadian clock. Research suggests that melatonin treatments may even help to improve the restorative value of sleep and to promote healthy physical and mental aging. Now, we talked about the relationship between digestive health and aging, digestive health and disease, but there's also a circadian relationship to health and disease. By that, I mean a 24-hour cycle or a aspect of the 24-hour cycle that is linked to how healthy or not healthy we are. Third shift workers take note. This is what jet lag is about. When you throw off the body's circadian rhythm, you don't feel good. And that not feeling so good is a reflection of a biochemistry that's not so good. Now, if you're just flying you know, on a vacation once a year or something or once every few years, that's not a big deal. But if you're traveling a lot and you're suffering from jet lag a lot, that can be a problem. If you are working the third shift and then you come home on the weekends and you try to readjust your clock, things can get thrown off. These are all reasons why you want to take a little bit of melatonin. Not to mention the fact if you're simply aging, which is all of us, a little bit of melatonin has anti-aging properties as well. And because it's important for the because it's important for the brain, it's going to have benefits for folks who are dealing with movement disorders, e.g., Parkinson's disease. A new study, this one from the University of Grenada, researchers identified new melatonin-based molecular targets that will allow, oh, this is great, that will allow to design new drugs against Parkinson's. So what they did is they found places in the brain that melatonin connects to, respond, uh, that respond to melatonin for good health, and now they want to develop drugs that match that. Instead of just giving you melatonin, they want to give you drugs. This is craziness. Can you see how how the drug, this pharmacomedical model works and why it doesn't serve us. Instead of telling people to take melatonin, they want to give us drugs, and rest assured they will, that it will duplicate the melatonin. And then how much, you think they're going to sell it for $5 a bottle like melatonin? I don't think so. You're going to need to go to the doctor, you're going to need to have checkups, and you think it's going to be non-toxic like melatonin? I don't think so. All right, read one more. Now we've got some phone calls here, so we'll get to your phones in a minute. If you're on hold, 844-236-6010. This is, uh, this is interesting. I want to hear your take on this, by the way, if you guys have an opinion on this. This is from, uh, uh, this is from the journal from uh, uh, Imperial College in London. Psilocybin, from the journal Neuropharmacology. Psilocybin, which is uh, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, help depressed patients reconnect with their emotions. So when was the last time you know, your doctor said, go, go take some magic mushrooms when you were depressed? No, they'll tell you to take Prozac because the magic mushrooms are Schedule 1. You're not allowed to have them. That alone says something. You're not allowed to have it. How does that taste, people? You're not allowed to have it. Not to mention the fact it grows out of the ground. It's a fungus. There's so many benefits to psilocybin mushrooms, health benefits, especially for cancer patients and especially for dying patients and also for now for uh, depressed patients. We've known this for years, by the way. It's been shown that uh, psilocybin is, is an antidepressant for decades. Not like Prozac antidepressant, by the way. A, an antidepressant that helps you get in touch with your emotions. But you can't have it. We can't have it. I want to know what you guys think about this, because it really ticks me off that we have a medical model that has no problem poisoning us 
with deadly drugs that kill tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people a year, but we can't have non-toxic psilocybin or non-toxic cannabinoids because, or non-toxic uh, uh, hallucinogenics like LSD and mescaline, et cetera, because they're not good for us. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to, let's go to David in Colorado. Good morning, David. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hello, Hi. hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Where in Colorado are you? Uh, Boulder. No kidding. Do I know you? Uh, well, I know you from listening to you. Great show. Oh, Thanks thank you. for doing it. I appreciate it. How long have you been in Boulder? About 15 years. Long Very time. nice. Don't tell anybody how about, about how beautiful it is. Yeah, right, right. No, I think <laughs> We're trying to keep that on the down low. <laughs> right. So what's go, what do you do, by the way, in Boulder? Uh, natural food industry. What, uh, no kidding. Which one yeah. can you say? You want to say? Yeah, sure. We make a hot sauce called Yin Yang Hot Sauce. Oh, that Organic is awesome. One of the neat things yeah. about Boulder is all the entrepreneurs, and especially food entrepreneurs. So I'm sure yeah, I'll run, it's, it's, Isn't it cool? It, yeah, it, it's a, it, it is the mecca for organic natural food. It's, you know what? Uh, I mean, what, without a doubt. It, it's an amazing place for food. When I first moved to Boulder almost 40 years ago, uh, I couldn't believe all the health food stores that were everywhere. It, it, that was the most oh, yeah. amazing thing was how healthy, from a nutritional standpoint and a diet standpoint, Boulder was. And I travel all over the country. I know L.A. and New York, people say that oh, you know, people are health conscious there, but not, not like Boulder. Not, definitely not yeah, like Boulder, no especially doubt. with food. It's, Very it's cool. Silicon Valley of, you know, Oregon. Yeah. Where did you move from? Yeah, I just, where did you move from? Uh, California, Santa. California, uh, San Diego. Uh, uh, San Diego. Okay, cool. Um, real quick, what's your question? And then I'm going to uh, put you back on hold, and we'll get you when we come up. What, what, what are you going to ask okay, me about? Okay, no worries. Just uh, about melatonin. Sometimes, I mean, I like to supplement with it, but sometimes, okay. quite often, it, it has the opposite effect. Does it what give you make you jittery? Yeah, and I'm just wondering, just from listening to you, if that's, it's that's called a paradoxical. Right re we call that in the pharmacy business a paradoxical reaction. Hang on, we'll address it when we come back from our break. Okay, David. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, talking to David in Colorado, in Boulder, Colorado. About melatonin. You there, David? Yes, sir. Right here. Hey, hey, buddy. Okay, so melatonin. Uh, you take it and you get uh, jittery, nightmares, anxious, what, what, insomnia. What, what's the deal? Yeah, not, not nightmares so much. It's just you know jittery. It just feels like the jittery. Effect. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. Okay, that's called yeah, a paradoxical and, reaction. It does happen with drugs, where a drug that you take for migraine headaches actually causes a migraine headache, or a drug that you take that's a downer makes you an, acts like an upper, like. Uh, uh, an antidepressant can be stimulating or, or a, a sleep aid can be stimulating sometimes and vice versa. A Ritalin may make people – in fact, that's one of the reasons why they give it to kids is Ritalin to, to leverage the paradoxical effect, Ritalin being a type of speed, a type of amphetamine. But anyway, it sounds like you're having a paradoxical effect, and this highlights the fact that melatonin is not one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. It's a hormone. So you do got to be a little bit careful. Uh, are you trying to take it for anti-aging? Uh, no, just to help me sleep. I'm not a great sleeper at all. Okay. Uh, so uh, do, do you sometimes get the paradoxical effect or always get the paradoxical effect? Sometimes. And it seems like if I try it two or three days in a row, it's more likely to happen. That's very interesting. You may be sensitizing your body to the hormone, to the natural amount of hormone you're secreting, and you may not need melatonin. You know, melatonin will help you sleep, but it's not like all sleep problems are melatonin deficiencies. You may have other reasons why. You may have cortisol. Uh, there, cortisol is really, the when it comes to insomnia, cortisol is really the, the thing that you want to work with. I would be using anti-cortisol strategies, uh, things like vitamin E, GABA, uh, vitamin A maybe, glycine, uh, magnesium. The, you're not going to get any of the... Uh, any of the paradoxical effects with these nutrients, and they can have cortisol stabilizing or at least sleep-inducing properties, all those nutrients. Uh, okay. I, I'd be doing that. Tryptophan even. Tryptophan can help you make melatonin, by the way. So that's another strategy for, 
for getting upregulating melatonin without actually taking the hormone, use 5-HTP or straight tryptophan. You, are you familiar with those? Yes, both. Um, how about pregnenolone? Love it. Pregnenolone is a great one. Not so much for sleep, but as a cortisol blocker, cortisol antagonist, awesome stuff. It's, it's one of the... Okay. It, it's along with melatonin. It's one of the most powerful things you can get in the health food store. And it's interesting because health food stores, like you know about Vitamin Cottage, right? You probably go to Vitamin Cottage in Boulder. Sure. They're notorious sure. for not, and Whole Foods too, they're notorious for not wanting hormones in there. And you can't buy DHEA. But it's almost like they don't right. realize that a melatonin is a, is a hormone. And then I don't think you can get pregnenolone there. You may be able to, but you can certainly no. get it on the internet. No, you can't yeah, get it there. I had to get it through the internet. You yeah. get it on Question, the internet. since you brought up DHEA, is that something you would recommend against? taking, you know, no, income. It's a no, really no, tricky income. one. Go ahead. In I'm sorry. Combination, no, it's okay. In combination with pregnenolone, not necessarily together, but say 10. DHEA, milligrams. you might want to consider it. You're going to have to experiment. See, now you're in the realm of hormones, of real true hormones. Yeah. And DHEA is turned into so many hormones and it's so fundamental that you got to be a little bit respectful of DHEA. And sure, so absolutely. how you take it, you're going to have to play with it. Seven keto can okay. be a little, you know about seven keto DHEA? We should talk Just about that. Just from listening to you. Okay, yeah. that's, that's one that will help mitigate some of the toxic, or not toxicity, but, but excessive effects that DHEA can cause. You're really upregulating hormones, the whole steroid hormone thing with DHEA, and, and you can run into some problems. Start off with what they call physiologic doses, like 10 milligrams. Maybe take it right. with pregnenolone, okay. and then see how you do. If you're jittery, because the, the side effects will be jitteriness, body hair, oily skin, hair loss, maybe, uh, breakouts. Those are the kind of side okay. effects that you'll get. And if you notice any, or, uh, notice any of those things, um, you might want to back down, mix it up a little bit, skip a day here and there, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. okay? Right. Sounds like you know some stuff, though, David. Good deal. Well, just from listening to you, really. All right. Well, well tell me, tell them, uh, plug, give your uh, company a plug one more time. Oh, sure. It's uh, Yin. Yang hot sauce. It's an organic hot sauce available at Whole Foods and other stores. Nice. All right, David. Have a great day, man. Okay, take care. Thank you, Ben. Have a good one. You too, man. Bye-bye. All right, let's go to Don in Georgia. Good morning, Don. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on, man? Good. Um, Can you talk to me a bit about gallbladder pain? I, I was thinking I was having back pain and then... Doing a little research, I'm thinking it might be gallbladder because it's a little okay. bit of the ribs, and, and the, it okay, seems so, to be um, alleviated with defecation. And the more I defecate, the more it alleviates. It, it, might, it might not be gallbladder; it might just be pressure in the intestine. You don't know that it's gallbladder. Okay. What do you mean by pain? Describe the pain. Um, like a almost like a gripping pain, like in the back and the right side. Does it feel pressure? Does it does it feel like it, pressure? Yeah, lots, lots. I don't know that necessarily. I, I, I don't lay down. When I lay down, it gets worse, actually. I don't know that I would necessarily say that was a gallbladder issue. That wouldn't, nece- that wouldn't come and go with a bowel movement, I wouldn't think. The gallbladder is a digestive organ. It holds bile so that when food comes out of the stomach and drops into the intestine, it gets hit with a big blast of gallbladder bile. Uh, the problem is bile recirculates. So after the bile is dumped out, it comes back around and goes, gets back in the gallbladder. And as it's going back around, it's picking up dirt and toxicity and food allergens and immune system stuff. And this is where the gallbladder can get really messed up. So if you have gallbladder problems, you have a bile problem. If you have a bile problem, it's, it, it's many times caused by, if it's not a deficiency, it's caused by foods so, or toxicity. It could be drugs. Hormones can do it too. Drugs, hormones, foods, all of these things can sl- cause the bile to become sludgy, and that can whack out the gallbladder. So you've got to work on the food thing. That's the most important place to work on is what you're putting into your body. Now, later on, you might want to work on hormones and such, the liver stuff, and that gets a little bit more complicated. But first and foremost, work on foods, eliminating problem foods. I'm not convinced you have a gallbladder problem, though. Sounds to me like it might be okay. intestinal. So- uh, fast, fast for a couple days. See what happens. That's what I would yeah, do. I fasted for like two days, and it, it, it went away. a lot. It didn't go away, but it made no? it a lot. It alleviated the pain a lot. If you and can, then, you do it. In the past, I was drinking a lot of water, so I was moving my bowels a lot. Okay, but and you I'm still had the pain. Dude. I'm only about 100. I'm only about 155 pounds. I'm not a big dude. But that's, that's all right. The more I move my bowels, the more it seemed to like alleviate the pain. It, you made the bile maybe backing up. It may have sludgy bile. I mean, it sounds like you got a food issue though. If you have sludgy bile and things are slow. 
Uh, it sounds to me like you have some kind of food issue. Do you notice that you have any food issues? Gluten intolerance, egg, um, pump, eggs, dairy? Uh, that... I love eggs, but they make me very gaseous. Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys, sounds like a food problem, bro. I'd be looking at foods. Okay. You may be something maybe sneaking under the radar and you're not noticing something. That's what I'd be focusing okay, so if I were you. You might do a swear OV cleanse. Food diary? Yeah, yes. Do a swear OV cleanse. Okay. And then uh, half a bottle of swear OV every hour for I would be doing three days if I were you. And then uh, when you start eating again, write it down in a book and write down how you feel and start to become like a detective and isolate problem foods. All right. And then if you want to do other things, probiotics, definitely in fermented food, I would be eating as little as possible. I'd be focusing on power foods, nutritionally dense foods like fermented veggies, algaes, fish, um, mushrooms. What else is good? Olives, okay. avocados, eggs. Well, if, if you can't do eggs. That's a good power food. It's not, not everybody can do them. But look for nutritionally dense foods. Soups, chicken soup, aloe vera. Okay. Okay? All right, man. Okay. Ha- have a great day. Thanks for Thanks. your call. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to Eric in South Carolina. Eric, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Pharmacist Ben. Hey, what's anyway. up? My my question was is I was a very avid user of the uh, Tangy Tangerine. Yeah, did um, you like it? Oh, I love it. Feel fantastic awesome. on it. Okay. Um, I quit using it for a while. Okay. And now I find I'm trying to wean myself back on it, and okay. it increases my blood pressure. It um, it I almost feel like fluish symptoms because of it. Interesting. And now, how much are you doing? Um, but initially when I hit myself, I just went to the, I started with a normal dose, which when was, you get the flu symptoms, how much do you do? I'm trying to figure out the dose. That's, here. that's, uh, two scoops back down. See what happens. Just back exactly. down. Exactly, And that's what I've done. And, and, and you, I'm just, I'm going to work myself up. Yeah. To back down. Was. Back down to a couple tablespoons and work yourself up. That's what I would do. Let me know how that works. I would like to, because uh, under ordinary circumstances, that uh, kind of flu-like symptoms, that's, a, that's not a good sign. That's a sign that you don't want to be using something. But the BTT is so powerful and so important, uh, I, would, I wouldn't avoid it. I would do smaller doses. But I'd like, to hear, uh, I'd like to hear how you do with it. If you don't mind either emailing me or calling back, let us know. Sure. We have to. Okay, good deal. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it, Eric. Thank you. Eric in South Carolina. All right. And that's it. There's the music. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And also the Join the Team link is there for you if you want to start a longevity business. And also please check out our Truth Treatment products, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream if you want the finest, most powerful, densely packed, nutritionally based topical skin health products. Look no further than truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now. We'll be right back.